Hello, I'm Simon Kroom and I'm a Professor of Supply Chain Management here at the University of San Diego and I'm also responsible as Executive Director for the Supply Chain Management Institute. One of the areas that's obviously of great interest to uh, many of the businesses we interact with, whether they're public sector, private sector, large businesses or small businesses, has been the whole issue about their environmental impact, the sustainability of, of their business. Um, in many cases, this manifests itself into being very concerned with the carbon footprint that facilities uh, themselves um, are responsible for. But increasingly, I think we're seeing an orientation towards being aware that what we produce in the way of environmental impact as one organisation or, or as one set of facilities is just the tip of the iceberg. Here, what we've been doing is, is trying to explore, firstly, how do organisations begin to think about the environmental impact of their supply chain? So last semester, um, on one of the special electives in the supply chain management uh, emphasis on the MBA, um, a team of students and I looked at really just local industry. How do local manufacturers, local services, uh, local organisations, how do they think about their environmental impact? How do they look at this in terms of supply chain management? And what specifically are they doing uh, about really mitigating some of the environmental um, consequences of supply chain behaviour? And this has been an interesting opportunity. Firstly, um, the students managed to interact with nine, ten different organisations uh, in the Southern California area, both through visits, through interviews, through um, telephone surveys. Secondly, they were involved heavily in looking at the literature uh, in the area. What do we know already about sustainability? And it's fair to say um, there's, there's been a, a rush of uh, academic literature, um, early stages, but uh, academic literature nonetheless, looking at sustainability in supply chain management. And thirdly, they looked at reconciling. You know, how does the rhetoric um, about sustainable practice match the reality of sustainable operations? And what this led us to recognize was that there seems to be a continuum, a, a degree of sophistication, uh, shall we say, uh, against which or along which we can um, evaluate numbers of organizations. At one extreme, the issue about voluntary recycling within a facility. You know, what does the organization do about aluminum, about plastic water bottles, about paper and cardboard and so forth? How does it deal with its uh, electrical and electronic waste? And at the other extreme, uh, we were all heavily influenced, and I think many people are heavily influenced, by the cradle-to-cradle -cradle notions. And what, what really transpired is that when we look at these degrees of sophistication, um, the, the students in particular said, well, look, at one end, we do see organizations who are concerned about the environment, but they're really only focusing on how they recycle and how they reuse. At the other extreme, we've got organizations who are taking it right back to the conception of goods and services, rethinking the way in which they uh, manage their operations. And in, in between, we see various key activities. One, thinking about how operations processes can become more energy efficient, how they can become leaner and use less uh, materials so there's less waste. There's a separate distinct area within supply chain, which is around the transport and logistics operation. How can we look at becoming more efficient in our use of our transport fleet or using an efficient provider? Secondly, how can we think about minimizing the amount of transportation through sourcing decisions instead of sourcing, say, with China? Should we source with Mexico? Um, and embedded within uh, that evaluation is not just the, the price that one is paying, or even the landed cost, but it's the total cost of ownership or the total environmental cost of ownership that's become a significant issue. So this research was very insightful. Um, it's it's a, a, a primary study really just looking at where, where are we now, uh, rather than trying to project some form of best practice or utopian ideal. And we discovered that different organizations are at different stages of evolution. Different organizations will emphasize one part of the supply chain more than another. So an organization that is very localized will spend a lot more time looking at how it manages its green facilities compared to an organization that is very global um, who are more concerned about their sourcing strategy compared with an organization who is local but with a global market who will be very much focused on 
the environmental impact of their distribution. So these themes emerged from, from the research and in the uh, sustainable supply chain management elective uh, which is offered uh, each academic year, we're looking at how students can build on their previous cohorts um, research. So in the, the fall of 2009, students who are enrolled on the sustainable supply chain management class will be looking at the work that their predecessors did last semester, looking at the publications that came out of that that have been presented uh, in North America and in Europe, and taking that research that bit further. How can we gain a more sophisticated understanding of the environmental impact of supply chain? Um, it, it's clear that this is a pressing issue on the agenda of many organisations. As, as we drive up Interstate 5, we see that the Marine Corps base at Camp Pendleton um, focuses or, or uh, pronounces its interest in protecting California's environment. But interestingly, when we look at the Marine Corps, the Marine Corps has a global reach in its supply chain. And green supply chain management is a, a serious and a pressing issue for how the Marine Corps work. Likewise, for a company like Intuit, who are uh, the producers and, and vendors of QuickBooks and Quicken, they explore very heavily how everything they touch can uh, become environmentally um, sensitive. Not just their supply chains, but their customers' supply chain. How can they help small businesses calculate their carbon footprint? So th these are some very interesting developments that our students are learning from, um, evaluating, and really making sense of what green collar jobs uh, in the future and particularly what green supply chain uh, jobs will look like.